Alright guys, what is going on? It's Abstract here, bringing you guys a tutorial on how I do my motion tracking. Yeah, so let me pull up an example here. This is from my edit, Understand. I'll leave a link in the description. Totally check it out. Leave a like and a comment if you want. Okay, so anyway, let's get started. So our first step is going to be dragging our clip into our composition. We're then going to just select the area that we think is going to be the best part. So. I just want it where I don't have the dead zones, where I have like my screen frozen. So my camera's always moving and it'll be easier to work with. Okay, so our next step is going to be to um, right click and we are going to hit the track camera button. You can also do this as an element in preset if you just type in 3D camera tracker and double click, it'll pop up. All right guys, so this is gonna take me a, mo a minute or two, so I'm gonna pause and get right back to you. All right guys, so I'm back as we see we have our marks all set up and we're going to hit create camera now we're going to just hit control T and type in the text that we want you guys will probably do like your name presents but I'm just gonna do tutorial for now um, we're gonna make that invisible so that and now we're gonna hit control Y so control Y is gonna get a solid you're just gonna hit OK and now we're going to type element in our effects and presets and then we'll just drag element in so when we have element dragged in, the black screen now comes back to our cinematic, and we're just going to trim our comp to work area. Let me do that here real quick. So you're just going to drag it in, right click, and click trim comp to work area. So then that way we're just working with those 11 seconds, however long you make your cinematic. So now we're going to go to custom layers. We're going to create a new text and mask. So we're going to use our text layer. So tutorial for me, be your name presents probably on the other. So now we're going to hit scene setup after we close that and we're going to hit extrude. When we hit extrude that now we'll be able to see our 3D text there. So I have pro shaders too. Um, you can use anything you want. They have bevels, you know, things like that. But you can just pick whatever layer you want. But um, I'm probably just going to leave it as blank for now. Let me see here. Bevel. Yeah. So I can, this will be an easy tutorial, so I'll keep it there. All right. <laughs> Okay, so now we have our tutorial in. Let me just play it to make sure it looks okay. You can always RAM preview the whole time, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna see the couple seconds and I think it's gonna look okay. So yeah, yeah it, look good. it looks good. So I think it's a little small. So we're going to go to group one and we're gonna hop down to the particle replicator and we're just going to turn the position for Z closer because Z is the um, near and far axis for us so we're just going to get that a little closer and you can always turn up the size if you want to I let me see I'll probably end up doing that let me uh, where is it okay particle size yeah so actually I yeah okay I think that looks good for the beginning you want the beginning to be really I don't know big for now so that it slides in and then whatever size you want the middle to be you know, obviously make the middle and then work around that. So I think that looks good there. And now we're just going to, yeah, turn it up a little bit. Maybe 14 or so, maybe eh, 11, whatever. I think it looks okay. So our next step is going to just, we'll just minimize these to keep our area clean. And um, let's see. So we're going to, oh, we're going to go back, back down the particle look and we're going to hit multi-object. We're going to enable multi-object. This is going to allow us to play with our rotation of our text. So we're going to hit random rotation. Let me find it on. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're going to probably want to put it up to about 15. Um, 15 to 20. 20 is definitely the max I would recommend because it starts to look a little disoriented when you make it higher than that. So I would say 15 is where I normally leave it. Um, so you can also do keyframing and things like that, but for this tutorial I think we'll leave it just as that. So we're going to hop down to render settings and we're going to go to shadows. So we want to enable shadows so that we see everything and then we're going to go to ambient occlusion we're going to enable AO <coughs> and we're just going to max everything out or just do it you know uh, 10 ish. You're going to want to turn everything up so it's really defined. Um, maybe make the gamma higher here and more intensity. I don't know. I'm probably, let's see, make our radius, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we have that, I can turn that up a little bit more too. 
Okay, so there's definitely a big difference now that we have, now that we're playing with these numbers. So I think the, let's see, uh, two, maybe a little higher. Yeah, I think that looks good. Ten. Okay, so our next step that we're going to do is we're going to hop over to effects and presets and we're going to hit drop shadow. We're just going to drop our drop shadow into our effects. And we're going to put the opacity way up. I like to put it maybe 70, 65. We're going to put distance to zero, and we're going to turn the softness way up. Um, I like to put mine around, you know, 30, 35-ish. And that way, now we'll be able to see, like, it's clearly defined there. So let me just minimize this. Yeah, let me scroll up. Wow. Got a lot open right there. Okay, now we have our fourth layer. So now we're going to start by... I'll just see how it looks first. I think it looks pretty good. Um, we're going to go to our render settings now, and we're just going to play with the color. Let me find lighting here. It's here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it's the second one down on render settings, and we're just going to play with the add lighting column. So we have single light, clear light, you know, those are clean blue, you know, warm, cold, cinematic, dramatic, all these different lighting styles that'll definitely give a good feel to our motion track to help it, you know, blend in with its environment and things like that. Um, some people use, I think it's called like key or color key or something like that. You can also use that. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I just use the lighting settings. So I think that looks really good. Um, it's coming along. Now that we have that, we can always stop here too. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do now is hop over to and create a shadow. We're going to create a shadow on the ground because, you know, that seems more realistic, right? Uh, this is always optional. I do it on most of my edits, but we're going to just create a uh, solid here. But see all these little red layers? We want to click one that's like on the ground or lined up with the ground. It'll make our job way easier. And it's, um, oh, shoot. I just clicked the wrong thing. Sorry. Hold on. So you're going to create a solid. <clears throat> here it is. All right, so create solid, and you're just going to get, I don't know what color yours will be. You might have red or blue. I guess I got purple this time. But, um, yeah, you're just going to, it's not going to matter. You don't need to change colors. So you're just going to drag it so that it lines up right under your text or what it looks like it lines up under your text, and you're going to make it big. You're going to make it cover the floor under your text. So, like, our floor here at the very beginning is going to be a little larger. So we're going to make this, you know, larger. Let's see here. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> I like how it saves your uh, proportion angle and stuff like that. So we're going to, uh, let's see, maybe lower. A little bit lower is good, yeah. All right, so our next step is we're going to just hop over to projects. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we have our solid. I think we do. Our solids in our solids layer. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now we're going to right-click, and we're going to hit pre-compose. So we pre-compose our layer, just hit OK. It'll set, a, set, a, set everything up for you. <clears throat> and now that you have everything set up, you can just double-click your uh, composition, and it'll change over to there. Now we're just going to hit Control-C on our tutorial. I know it's still invisible, but trust me, it works. So you're going to hit Control-C. OK, now you're going to hit Control-V, and you're going to copy it, turn it back on, and you're going to line it up in the center. About there. OK, now we're going to... Let's see. You're going to hit Control-T again to get your tuto uh, tutorial, and you're going to change it to color black. Okay, because obviously shadows are black. I guess you can change it to any color you want, but black is always the most realistic, especially for shadows. So let's line this up. Uh, okay. Now we're going to hide our track solid. And as you can see, we have our uh, tutorial written right below us. However, you can see that it's not lined up properly as it's going to be, you need to flip the other way, and actually I'm going to move this too, let's see, okay, so you're going to just hold shift and then rotate it, it'll like snap your angles for you, uh, there it goes, okay, good, so now it's all lined up, we're just going to go back to here, you know, that looks fine, you can just do whatever you want, it's not a big deal, um, we're going to hop back over to our effects, and we're going to look up a lens blur or a camera blur and then let me find it yeah camera lens blur under blurs it's just a basic you don't need to uh, 
plug-in or anything like that. So now we're going to turn our blur radius up. I don't know, I like to keep mine about 10 or so, maybe 15. Um, you're going to turn up the roundness. That'll just keep it from being too sharp and it'll blur the edges so it looks a little more realistic. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Make sure. Okay, so now we're going to turn down our opacity. Let's 40-ish or so, maybe 50. I don't know. Um, you can just copy these settings if you want, or you can just experiment yourself. But, yeah, so let's turn up the blur radius a little more. Okay, so now we got that. We can line it up under right under our text so that we're 100% sure. And um, if we run that through, it looks pretty good. A um, little big. Let's move it back so it you know, lines up a little more. And we can always shrink it by just grabbing the corners and dragging in. And if you hold shift, it'll uh, keep the proportion size the same. So you can match it. Um, I think that looks good there. Yeah, so now we're going to, let me turn up the radius a little bit more, and then we will get going to the next part. Um, difference, threshold. You can always turn up gain, too. That'll just give it a little more definition as the shadow. Um, it'll highlight the inner parts. I don't know. I like to leave it at 15 or so. And I think that's it. So if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like.